or Tuesday is now open. I would literally write it up the text message and I get an email from a track team saying, Hey, can we do pictures on Tuesday? We have a meet on Wednesday and Thursday, so we can't do it on those two days. God damn. And I'm like, that means more people. I mean, I have to go. I can't just give it to someone else to do. Right. I mean, so tomorrow was supposed to be a really easy day for me. I was supposed to do one of these podcasts. I'm doing a podcast with Sarah Vorva. I don't know if you've ran into her. Um, she's a wedding photographer uh, and uh, really a, a, a decent friend. Um, but her and her husband have been married for 10 and a half years. And uh, she, she's going to come and they're going to talk about just their marriage and what they've learned throughout marriage and what works for them, what, what doesn't work for them. Also going to talk to them about, they have a, they have a son. I think they just have one son, but I'm sure I'll learn better <laughs> when we do chat. Um, we're going to talk about what's worked for them as parents and everything. So that'll be, that'll be good. But that's all I was supposed to do tomorrow. And then um, I got on a couple of calls today and a, I have a realtor who needs me to come do some drone work for them in the morning or uh, yeah. Oh, yeah 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 thank you yeah that's right um so thank you for sending me tina uh and then i hung up with tina and five seconds later i was told you about the demolition company that i've been doing some work for um he after months and months of just not you know who just hadn't caught up or anything he messaged me and uh and he has a new marketing team and the marketing team loves really loves my work um for for his stuff and they gave me a call and they were they're just bragging on me i felt so i had a big old head for a minute they were just talking about how like they they see uh, companies all the time doing stuff um, that d it just doesn't work. Right. But she said that she saw my the stuff that I made for them, and she's like, "That's oh, that's good. That's good work." And I was like, "Wow!" And so she just compared me to these big you know companies, and she's like, "Usually it's just like some ugly talking heads, you know, and and just some actors acting like they're doing the job." But she said the fact that we actually had people doing the real job and showing the work um, was a pretty big deal. So. So she she actually is giving me um, another one of her clients um, called Ballers Academy. Um, it's it's a sports thing. So, eh, you know, who knows? Maybe a plus B might equal C. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so that'll be a, that'll be a fun one to figure out. I, I my mom had to look it up. I was at my mom's just having pizza before this. That's why I'm like so tired. But uh, she she looked it up and she said she showed me it was a sports thing. I was thinking it was like some type of like I don't know like entrepreneur, the yeah, like playful name for like a course or something, but it's not thankfully because I feel like sports is like wizard way more money in that than probably this thing that other the other. But so Tina called me and she was like, "Hey, I need this and this." I'm like, "I know how to fly a drone and I can do it, but one, I'm not licensed commercially to do it. Right? Two, I don't." have I was about to say, do you have a drone? No, no, no. No, nah, you need one. You need one. I used to. They're just fun. They're just yeah. fun whether, whether you're making money or not. Right. So I'm like, I can't do it. But I do know someone who's licensed, who has a drone, and who would love to do it. I don't think he's busy tomorrow. So let me call him, talk to him. Yeah. I wasn't that busy tomorrow, but I'm, I'm doing stuff now, which is fine. I like I like making money. Two, two, two projects in one day, and then I'll also do a podcast. It'll be a full day. I have this one wedding video. Hey, Cody, whenever you're ready, actually, we're ready to start. Um... And then have you done a good distance. Um, maybe between a little bit closer between there and here. Okay, it's totally fine. Um, but I I didn't have anything going on tomorrow, but now I do, and I'm more than happy to do, happy to you know have stuff happening. So, right. Um, but you should definitely get a drone. Have you looked at any hmm. that you're actually interested in? Yeah, I definitely want one of the DJI's, um, the DJI Mavericks. I've looked at, I don't even remember what it is. Yeah, it started earlier. Yeah. It was one of the DJI Cinema drones that they released. Oh, you want, a, you want an actual, like, really I, nice one? I want that. I'm not going to get that. That's you you should get the, well, you, you, have so, you have a little more spendable, you know, cash in the bank than I do. You should probably go for the, uh, and if you do, get the Mavic uh, 3 Pro. <laughs> it's so nice, dude. Like, it has, like, the one-inch sensor and, like, really nice. I, I don't remember if it does the quad um, the quad bear imaging thing where it takes the pixel and breaks it down into the four quadrants. Um, I haven't seen that yet. You haven't seen it yet. Um, so your iPhone does it, actually. They use that, yeah. they use that technology. Yeah. Um, and then my my drone, which is just the Mavic Air 2, <laughs> um, it shoots 48-megapixel photos. It has a 12-megapixel sensor, but it uses the that technology, so it turns it at 48, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, yeah. If you if you were going to go big, go big there. Yeah. What are you thinking about? Or were you thinking about like one of the massive ones, like the Inspires? No. Okay. It was one that I saw over the summer that DJI had just released, where you can like set its flight pattern in camera, and it'll continue doing that same pattern over and over. So you need to do multiple. I think you can. Do, I think you can do that in a lot of things. You probably can, but I just saw an ad about it when oh. DJI first released it. I'm like, that's what I want. That's pretty sick. Yeah, that's awesome. But I know in Oklahoma wind, I don't want a mini because the mini will probably not do good with the wind that we have here. Yeah. So definitely some kind of pro model. I forget. Someone just bought a mini. I think it might be Brandon. And uh, and you can make it happen. You can make it work, but it, it will just absolutely get pushed around, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, of course, we... The, the reason to buy a mini is to avoid having to um, register it with the FAA. Right. Because it's just under the weight the weight limit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really not that hard. Just get your number, put it on the side. You know, you have to get, a little, you have to get your number written on the side of your drone. Well, that's why I have a cricket machine. You have what? A cricket machine. Print it out. I, I, need, I need one of those, dude. Because I, yeah, I, as you know, my organization, like look at my stuff over there, you know. Like I'm not an organized person. Um, so no, like that, having one of those would be great. That's how we organize all of our light kits. All of them say all about now and the color that is on the zipper tag. So we just printed it on vinyl, stuck it on the light. So it's basically like an all about now sticker yeah. on the light. So if it's the yellow kit, it's the stickers in yellow. If it's a red kit, stickers in red. So everything stays organized. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> did you buy it? Did you end up buying that, uh, those new, uh, light stands that you're looking at? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, um, what were you going to use those for? Because, I mean, you have some really nice heavy-duty things. Yeah, so one, we're starting to do more and more setups when we go to shoots. Mm -hmm. We're also adding more and more lights when we go to shoots. When you say more support. setups, you mean like more stations? Yeah, more okay. stations because so you can more organizations are getting bigger, so we need them to be able to control. How many photographers do you have now? I think we have 10 that we can reach out to at any given point in time. How many did you have on that one that I helped on? Like Thir 14. That was a lot. That was a yeah. lot, dude. No. How did that end up going? It went really good. We ended up getting everyone done in a timely matter. We did have some issues with the lights, but we've resolved that. So you had a guy who was shooting on a raw. Yeah, over here. I don't know about that one. SD cards. I'm not. I'm not just not used to shoot on JPEG, especially not medium or small JPEG. Like <laughs> for school pictures, that's all you need. But I'm just getting you back to that one wedding where you shot. You shot it all on JPEG and not on raw. So, <laughs> and there, yeah, I'm not used to shooting in raw because I shoot. Because you shoot, yeah, it's just, different. it's just a different medium, right? You know, but that's awesome. We don't well, have to edit that much. Yeah, well, my gosh, I I need an Isabel, especially with studio lighting. You light it in camera, you have to edit the colors a little bit. Uh -huh. Do you awesome. ever edit like acne or anything like that for the teenagers or anything? We are when we sell the pictures, they have the option to purchase retouching, okay. and it's done done through AI. I was going to ask you that, but we make that as an add on. And what AI do you use for the retouching? It's through the lab, so we don't actually have to do it. It's just you buy it, the lab processes it through AI and sends it out. Um, if they buy like extensive retouching or glass glare or something like that, then someone will actually go in and retouch it and then upload the image. Then you'll purchase it that way. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, I, I bet it's uh, I bet it's probably a relief to just like you know, kids always are. I have an acne just yeah. pop up the worst. The worst time. Yeah. So I bet that's probably a pretty good relief for them and the parents. It is. Plus, I, me personally, like, I've had acne all through school. Mm -hmm. But also, that described who I was. Like, that's who I am with acne. Okay. But I didn't want that edited unless I wanted it. Edited. Oh, interesting. Okay. Like, so my whole concept is I don't want to edit someone else's facial structures. Unless yeah. they specifically yeah. asked me, hey, can you remove my acne? Or something like that like or can you whiten my teeth or i have a bruise because i fell can you edit that out right Dang. or a birthmark some people want it some people don't so my whole concept is i don't want to remove it unless i've personally been asked to remove it. that makes sense that makes plenty of sense because it might be a sensitive topic to somebody and you don't want to just bring it up um i have i'm not going to name any names but i have a venue owning friend um that i was doing some headshots for and you know she had actually just lost a lot of weight and she looked fantastic um, but you know, when you lose weight, you have skin left over and, uh, it was just kind of showing a little bit. And I was like, man, I know if it was me, I want that edited. Right. But I was like, I don't want to be insensitive and just do it without her blessing. So I, I, I did, I went ahead and edited it and I sent her both. And I was like, Hey, look, um, 
you choose which one you want to go with. I don't want to be a jerk. Um, and I'm sorry if this hurts at all. And she's like, and she just came back. She's like, Rob, I really appreciate that. Uh, I really, yeah, I've been working hard to look better, to feel better about the way I look. And, uh, and you know, she was able to have those photos on our website and, right. you know, really feel like she looked the way that she was trying to. So, right. And that's what you're trying to do when you're capturing photos is give you the best representation of who's in front and just, the best memory for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we're actually not here to talk about photo. Uh, funny enough, no. um, even though we should, we should uh, be the started or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are. We're starting. So you can, yeah. Feel free. Um, and so what we're actually here to talk about, obviously, is marriage. You know, because you're obviously a married man, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> now, single as I can be. Yeah, as single as you can be. Did you tell me that you've you've never been in like a serious long term relationship, right? Right. Um, but kind of where I want to get, uh, something from you is like what your, what you've noticed from your parents, right? Your parents, how long have they been married? Let's see. I'm 28. So they've been married 29 years. 29. Okay. So they got married and then they quickly had a baby. And obviously you have a younger brother. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so how much younger is he? 11 months, 11 days younger. Okay. Dang. So they popped you out and they're like, Hey, you know, if it happens, it happens. Do you guys have any more? No. Just me and my brother. Okay. Okay. Yep. Interesting. So they've been married for 29 years. So you, there, there's a lot of opportunity, you know, your entire life. Yeah. That you got to watch them have a marriage and you've probably seen them have some fights, I imagine, some disagreements. And I am curious on what those look like. But we'll probably start off real quick with kind of do, do an introduction for everybody who knows, who doesn't know you, uh, tell people what you do and, um, and just kind of describe who you are. Well, my name is Armand. I'm a photographer. I mostly shoot sports photos, uh, portraits. We do action photos, but portraits is what we specialize in. That's what I do, I guess. Um, I own a company called All About Now Photography. Mm, yeah. Well, that's too I'm out. Yeah. Well, you're a, you're a young guy. Yeah. Um, 28 years old. Right. Where are you from? Not like country-wise, but like where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, so I was born in India, moved to New York in 2000 and moved to Oklahoma City in 2001 and basically I've been living in the Oklahoma City or Norman Edmond area for most of my life. You and I are the same age almost pretty much. You're barely younger than me. Um, you lived in New York. Yep. One year. And then you moved here when? 2001. After or before? Like 9-11? Oh, uh, I believe, honestly, I was too young to know. I'm pretty sure it was before. Okay, you're probably in, like, kindergarten, if anything, right? Probably, yeah. Okay. I'm five so, years old. Is that, is that, does that have anything to do with why your parents moved here? No, like, that was just, that just happenstance. Was, okay. They had a better job opportunity here, so. Oh, cool. What were they, what were they coming here for? They had a friend that owned a gas station at that time, and they moved here to work for him, at, and that's why they ended up moving here. Okay, and so... They do they buy that gas station from them because I know obviously they own gas station now, right. um, and well, they manage a couple, couple other things now. Right? Yeah, they manage a gas station now, and then they own a smoke shop. Okay, uh, but no, they did not buy that gas station at least not right away. They worked for him for a while, and again, this was when I was really young, so I don't remember all the details. But they worked for that person for a while, uh, and then I think after a little bit, they ended up taking over as managers of the store. Oh wow. So they weren't like full owners, but they did manage it, run the day-to-day -day businesses, ordering stuff, bank deposits, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, typical like yeah. owner, operator, manager stuff. Right. So um, and that, what, that was in 2001. And then what are they doing now? So now they live in Arkansas. Yep. They moved whenever me and my brother started college. Uh, moved to Arkansas. They've been managing the same gas station since then for two of their friends that they knew from New York. Um, recently they bought a house, renovated the entire house and then right under, so it's, they live on the top store or top floor and right under it, they ended up renovating it into a smoke shop that just opened 27 days ago. That's a big deal. And, and do either one of them smoke or they nope. just see, they're just, they just looked at the market and they were like, well, that's, that's doing a thing. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. they've been doing gas stations for their entire life so they know what sells where they can make profit where they can't right smoke shops is one of the places where you can definitely make a profit especially with vapes now being such a big deal yeah 
and having a store dedicated to just vapes and all the flavors since there's hundreds of thousands of them. Yeah, that's a wild thing to have to like go through all that and choose the right thing. What yeah. goes into that? Do you have any idea? Uh, not really. I mean, of course I help them, but I don't order the products. I'm just like, well, what do you need help with? Yeah, yeah, what can I do? Right. I love business and I love the aspect of running a business, managing a business. Oh, it's, I would hope so. When it comes to like the gas station part of it, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, you you went to OU in Norman. Yeah. And what did you go for? I originally went for computer science. Didn't like it. So I switched to business marketing. You don't want to be the, 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 the Indian guy who does the IT stuff? You know, like the like it's cliche almost, right? It is cliche. And that's what me and my brother both were. You guys were just like, hold on. We're not doing that. No. Now, your brother ended up going for cinematography, right? Yes. He ended up going for cinematography, but he started with computer science as well. Yeah. Okay. But luckily, our parents are very modern now, and they don't have that mindset of most parents in India. No offense to anyone that's offensive by that. Um, yeah, but they're offended. They can, you know. They can deal with it. Yeah. But my parents were really modern, so we're like, okay, well, we're not doing computer science, so it's boring. So he ended up switching his major. I ended up switching my major. Okay. I went to business and marketing, and he started doing cinematography and journalism, basically. And you're both actually doing yeah. that. So did your parents just let you know? It's like, hey, whatever you're actually interested in, yeah, go do. Yeah. Interesting. So no, they're like, it's how did like you guys it. do the get into the computer science part then? Well, whenever we were first kids, we my parents again were very traditional at that point. They okay. still were Americanized, as most people would say. Um, and that's what they thought we should do is they wanted one of us to be a doctor, one of us to be a computer engineer, a okay. science person. Uh, but as we grew up, obviously they became more modern. We found our own passions. We just, like my brother tried being into the doctor, like he joined the medical clubs and stuff in high school. He did pretty good, but then he's like, no, this is not for me. This isn't what I'm interested in. No. And then he went to do, oops, sorry, that's my brother calling me now. Yeah. Um, and then we ended up finding our own passions and ever since he was a kid he loved telling stories yeah and we used to like make harry potter videos like wand fights and like fan fiction or something them. yeah that's and awesome. he would edit them that's awesome on what like movie maker or what some app on the iphone i don't even know sure yeah but he found like different apps where like you could have effects and stuff so he'd be like okay jump here don't move okay get out of frame that's and awesome it would edit it because i you know i found it so funny that like and what did you do as a kid uh, what were you interested in as a kid? As a kid, cartoons, cartoons. Okay, being on my phone, normal, normal kid stuff. Major, normal yeah. kid stuff. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Being on social media. I was just gonna say, I, I think it's funny that your brother was into that because Cody and I, like growing up, <laughs> like we would we would create videos too. We did the same thing, you know. We, and it was typically like parkour videos or stuff like that. Like our friends would go out and just parkour around like the park or you know yeah. wherever. And uh, and we would go and just have some fun and shoot some stuff and edit it together. And then like me and Cody, I think at my uh, at one of my stepdad's houses, we uh, we just made like a chase video. It was like set to what song was that, Cody? What song did we use? It was like a it was like a disturbed, yeah, it was disturbed. Like that it wasn't down with a sickness or something, but like uh, oh, it'll hit us. Yeah, that, it'll come to us. But um, huh? Um, he was just coughing, uh, but no, we would, we would, you know, I, I, so I love the, the track of like, yeah. you know, doing things as a kid and then being able to finally realize that into fruition as an adult, you know, just having those interests. So I'd be curious to search young Armand, you know, and see, you know, what he was interested in. If there was any indication of like, oh, there was some sort of, cause business, you know, in general, I think is something you're good at. Yeah. Right. Like you're very, you're very like great with networking organization is kind of a thing you're good on or is that something forced by uh by your business partner isabel um a little bit of both i do like organization and but i organize a lot in my head oh yeah rather than on paper or in person which drives people crazy because like oh i didn't know we needed to do all that i'm like fair it's in my head but um she also does help with like the organization because she's like yes i want the gear organized i want this organized and it was her idea to label everything like all of our gear and colors okay. and patterns and stuff like that to make it easy when we go to shoots to re-put everything back together know where everything is keep track of it yeah so a little bit of both okay awesome so yeah i'd be curious what what young armand was was doing with that 
So my dad was actually a photographer slash videographer when he lived in Africa. Really? Uh huh. So that's where I think both me and my brother get it from a little bit. Is that's what he did when he was in Africa? Is he would go to weddings and events? Oh, and that sounds and love us. Yeah. I'd love to shoot an African wedding. That'd be sick, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, and then he also repaired stuff. So he repaired like uh, radios and old TVs and in the old days and stuff like that. So did he repair them because he? Like knew there was a market for it, or was he just doing it for friends? What was he? How- no, that was his business. That's all. Awesome. That's what he did. Was he had the little shop, and people would bring in stuff that was broken, and he would repair it. Okay, so is that kind of why he maybe like pushed you guys towards computer science? Because maybe, that's yeah. really probably the same vein, right? Um, yeah. I have a I have a, a friend who's in computer science, though. It's pretty funny. He uh, he talks about like um, microchips and like boards and and data and he says that like you know a lot of people like even in computer science don't truly get how it works he says it might as well just be black magic and that blows me away for someone who that people who are in the field you know yeah. may not even fully you know really grasp it that's that's pretty cool that technology is you know that that extreme mm-hmm. um but so looking back kind of like through your years with your parents like how long did you live with them Let's see, I basically lived with them my entire life up until I went to college. I didn't even move out until the second semester of my freshman year because I started at UCO, which I lived at home for, and then transferred to OU in the spring of my freshman year, and that's when I moved to the dorms. Wait, so you started at UCO? Yes. And you were living at home? Yeah. What year was that? So that was the fall. I graduated in spring of 2016, so fall of 2016. Okay. I lived at home going to UCO. And then 2017 spring, I went transferred to OU and that's when I moved out. Okay. My brother moved, started at OU. So he moved out six months before. Okay. So 2017, um, that's seven years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is. About seven years ago. Um, and so 29 minus seven, 22. So you were with your parents for, for 22 years. Um, what do you feel like you have picked up from looking at their relationship? If you if you've seen much example, which I imagine you have to of, um, what have you seen them like grow their marriage around? Um, what was what was paramount to them? Do you think? Well, to them, it was all about me and my brother. They wanted to make sure that they could give us the best life that we could have, because growing up, they had to work even as kids. Especially growing up in India and my dad, like, eventually moving to Africa and, like, his family moving to Africa. They had to work as kids helping their mom. I think my mom, or my mom, my mom's mom, so my grandma, used to do, uh, like, make fabric, like, uh, clothing. So my mom would help make those clothings for her to sell and stuff like that, even as kids after school. They'd come home, they'd make that and tell them. So your mom would make that stuff and sell it, right? Or would your dad sell it? No, my mom would sell. My mom would make it for her mom, so for, for her my mom. grandma. Okay, and then my grandma would sell it. Your but, grandma would sell it. Yeah. So okay. Even as kids, they were always working. So like, there's there's always a business in there right. somewhere. Look at that. Yeah. So with all of that going on, my parents were like, "We want to make sure that you guys have a great life. You guys can have a car when you grow up, go to college if you want to, stuff like that." So they their entire marriage and livelihood depended on. Me and my brother, that's what they focused on, was to make sure that we could have a good kickstart to our life, basically. Right. And so they very much postponed, and tell me if this is right or wrong, okay? Because Phil, I'm, I'm more than happy to be wrong, so correct me. Hey, they may, they very much postponed their immediate happiness for future success of their family. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Your dad, like, when he lived in Africa, was that before your mom? No. They... Lived, I think they got married to, honestly, I don't know the full details, but pretty sure they got married. My dad and his family moved to Africa. My mom stayed in India for two years or something uh-huh. like that. And then they- After they were married, were yeah. they apart for two years? Pretty much, yeah. But, you know, my dad- I'm sure they took trips back and forth to see each other. Stuff like that. I would hope so. But me and my brother were also apart for those two years. Wow. So I was with- my dad, I believe, and my brother was with my mom. But then, you know, they eventually all went to Africa together. And then from Africa is when we moved to New York. That's rough, man. That's, that's, how old Again, you? I don't remember any of that. I was one or two. Wow. And so, but your dad had his family surrounding him, right? 
he had Pretty a support cool. system. Yeah. Right. So, so I mean, he was there working. Is that why he was in Africa once again? He opened his own business in okay. Africa. Wow. Uh, so, so wait, wait, wait. He went from he went from India uh-huh. to Africa uh-huh. to open a business. Yes. So you know how there's we have Best Buy here, right? Right. In America, yeah. he basically opened the Amer or the African version of Best Buy in Africa before it was a thing. Well, we didn't have any like Alibaba or freaking like you know eBay or anything like that. What was how, where was he getting his like massive stock of stuff? I don't know. I think he was making most of it because now that company that company still exists. My dad's brother runs that same company. What that is that called? Called? Uh Metro or Modern Electronics, something. Modern Electronics. Okay. It's That's based wild. out of Kampala, Africa. That's wild. So is your and now they partner. make TVs. Oh, really? Yeah. They make TVs. They like, have, with their they brand. And actually, the, yeah. They come back that makes TVs. That's so cool. I don't know if it has their brand or if it's like an off-brand, like how Walmart has on. Yeah. I think it's like one of those. But yeah. they have a factory that makes TVs that they, they sell. That's so awesome. Wow. So, man, your, your parents split up. Um, and you, why did your mom decide to stay in India for that little bit? To be with her family. Okay. Okay. Cause you know, family is obviously a central theme here. Like you said that they were really focused on you guys. Yeah. And so that makes sense that they probably carry that down from their parents. Yeah. Right. Now, is that a, is that a big thing for Indian, um, culture? Like family is like, you know, really sticking together. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a big thing. Like right now my dad's side of the family still lives pretty much together in africa my mom's side of the family pretty much lives together in india oh, wow. now obviously as the grandkids grew up like my cousins they started moving away like i have a cousin that lives in canada now who's a dentist oh. i have um uncles that eventually ended up also moving to the u.s that live in dallas how could that have cousins so okay so you're eventually they started spreading apart but for the longest period of time they lived together, and some of them still live together. Okay. Like, my mom's sister still lives with one of her sons, and they're my grandpa on my mom's side and my grandma on my mom's side still live together with my mom's sister. You know a lot with your family, honestly. Um, I mean, I like, and it sounds a little bit maybe weird to say that, like, I don't know much about my family, you know? Um, I know that I have some family. Well, no, my grand, both my grandparents have passed that live in Missouri. Mm-hmm. They used to live in Missouri. And then both of my grandparents that used to live in New York have passed. But I don't know where, you know, people are at right now. And so the fact that that seems like it's, uh, it's pretty well ingrained in you that, you know, your parents obviously cared about their family. Yeah. And, like, do they do they care much about their lineage, like where they come from and, like, uh, what, what, their, what, the peop- what their ancestors did? Oh, uh, never was that talked about what their okay. ancestors did. Okay, I have a, I have a, uh, I have a belief that the things that are important to your parents, they will typically like bring up more than one time, right? Yeah. Um, my my dad would always bring up, it's like, oh, we're from Hungary, we're from Hungary, we're Hungarian. And it's like that really mattered to him. We didn't know who the heck was in Hungary, <laughs> you know? I we couldn't go, we couldn't tell you where we're from in Hungary, but that's we're we're from there, darn it, you know? So it mattered to him. Right. Um, growing up, did you see your parents? Um, or do you hear your parents talk about like the way they were raised much? Yeah. My mom always would talk about, you know, how her mom raised her and my dad would talk about how his dad raised him. They would always, but every time they would talk about it, they would always be laughing and joking about it. Oh, yeah. Like my dad, he used to skip school and yeah. he would get it. Like he would skip school and go to the movie theaters. Oh, cool. And eventually his dad caught him and started hitting him with the umbrella. Yeah. Like. That was a thing. And he would always laugh at that. It's saying, don't skip school. I'm going to grab my umbrella. Okay. And, you know, he was obviously joking, but he would bring stuff up like that. Like You didn't skip school? No, I was a good kid. Come on. Come on. No, I didn't skip school. I call, I was sick a couple of times when I wasn't sick, yeah. but I didn't, like, get school and go see a movie. Your parents probably, their their BS meter was probably, like, off the charts. They they knew you were, but you're such, you're probably such a good kid they didn't care, right? They did. That's awesome. No. Um, so, I knew how to fake a thermometer too. What was that? I knew how to fake a thermometer to make it look like a. How do you fake? How do you fake you get the dinner hot coffee? I, look, I, if you got a hundred and ten <laughs> degrees, you know you didn't, you didn't know when to pull it out. Uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. But uh, <laughs> so your parents, as when you were a kid, do you remember them going on many dates? Did they spend a lot of time together? What was their uh, What was their like personal like? 
relation? How do they keep their fire going, if you can remember? Honestly, they didn't. Every time we went anywhere, it was all four of us would really? go everywhere. Birthdays, we would always go to this one restaurant until they closed. But we would always go to the same restaurant for everyone's birthday. So we'd go there three times in September, once in July. What, what restaurant are we talking? Uh, it was, at first, it used to be called, I believe it was called Dodge. It was off of the Northwest Expressway. Uh-huh. Um, it closed down. I think when we were in the fourth grade or fifth grade or something like that. Then we started going to Dot Wu. Dot Wu's Wu. been like, it's moved three or four yeah. times. Okay. Okay. I just know the one off of May Avenue now. Yep. So that's the newest location, but it used to be on Portland. Okay. Then it moved to Northwest 63rd and now it's on Memorial, but they have a second one near I-242, by the way. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. Um, So you don't remember them going on dates? No. Really? Yeah. They would go- Where do they spend time together? Just with home. everybody. At home. With all, all the guys together. They would work together at okay. the gas station. So, like, okay. when we were in school, they would be together. But, you know, most okay. of the time, anytime we went out, it was all four of us. Yeah. I don't know. They probably don't mind. They, they're they empty nesters now, oh, right? Yeah. So, that's they, they get all the time they want together. Yeah. But I find it so interesting because uh, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I always, because I ask a lot of people, I'm like, hey, what's your marriage advice? You know, you get a lot of, like, the cliches, like, don't go to bed angry or she's always right, you know, stuff like that. But one of the ones that I really feel like ring true is never stop dating. Like, put, give the kids to a sitter mm-hmm. and you spend some time together. But to hear you say that you don't remember them, you know, yeah. did they never took you over to grandma and grandpa's and then they disappeared or anything like that? No, grandma and grandpa lives in India or Africa. No, the only family that we had here was the four of us. Right. And so there was never a babysitter that came over and... So interesting. Okay. No, so they, I mean, but, and, and that's not a bad thing no. necessarily. It just means that it just really show those to show that couples are very different, yeah. you know, and, and not necessarily based off of maybe like your, well, your upbringing for sure, more than likely, but it did it have anything to do with just like the culture they were raised in was just, was like keeping the family together all the time and never like letting your kids go be washed by someone else was that was that part of the culture or was that it was a little bit of both like i said my parents the whole reason they moved to america was for me and my brother right all the hard work that they put in because there were some days that they worked 12 to 18 hours at the gas station yeah all of that hard work the entire thing was for me and my brother right right so when they had money to go out, they wanted to make sure me and my brother went with them to enjoy it because that's what they were earning money for was for my brother and I so that we could have a good life and we could have fun. So for them, it wasn't necessarily, hey, let's go out, just you and me. It was, where do we want to take the kids? Right. Because that's what we're here for. That's awesome. So that's what their entire thought process was. Now, they would get to spend a lot of time when they were at work together, right. when it was slow. Um, do you ever, you ever secretly, you ever see your parents flirt? Did they flirt much? I mean, every now and then, but it wasn't secretly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they flirted openly in front of you guys. Like, what did that look like? I mean, it was like, I don't know how to describe it because it was like Indian flirting where they would just like (laughs) pick on each other, but like in Hindi. Oh, really? Like most people would think it was, um, like, you know, how you would call your, I don't know. Like, if you're talking to your friend and you randomly call him the B word just for fun. Uh-huh. It was stuff like that, but like okay. in India, it, okay. like in Hindi. Okay. So it, would, it was definitely them flirting together, but it was just, you know, openly. And I don't mean to cross any lines or anything like that, but like, you ever see your, your dad like smack your mom on the butt or anything like that? Or no, did she, did done. she like, no, really? Okay. No. Okay. So they weren't, they weren't like really like sexually flirted, flirtatious, no. because that's something that uh, a lot of people, will even say is really good in a marriage as well. And so I'm, I'm really finding this, this really interesting to hear about that because a lot of people will say in a marriage, it's really good to, you know, let them know that they're desired, right? Let your spouse know that you desire them, right. at, like, often. Um, and so when no one's looking, just flirt a little bit like that. Um, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Huh. So obviously your parents love each other. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, they've been together so long, and now so long without you and you and... Or Han in the house. Right. So, or Han's your brother's name, by the way. I've just realized we haven't said his name. Um, so, how could you tell that your mom and dad loved each other? Well, what was the displays of affection that you feel like you could see there? Um, they would force each other to buy things and put up stuff that they wanted for themselves away. 
like we would go to Ross, right? Okay. My mom wanted this jacket, but like they would split up when they go shopping. So like my dad would go to the guy's section. My mom would go to the girl's section. Obviously me and my brother would go with my dad because we wanted to look at our own stuff. So me and my brother would pick out stuff. My dad would pick out stuff. My mom would pick out stuff. And then we'd all meet back at like the cart. Okay. Go through everything. And then my mom's like, ooh, that's a good shirt. And then you see her put away her shirt or vice versa. Like that's what they would do. Like, okay, you need this shirt back more. I'm not going to get it or vice versa. Interesting. Like, because they were probably working off a budget. Right. They were, that they were interested. Yeah. That's probably a really responsible thing. Yeah. So they would always show off. Like you could obviously tell they always loved each other. Right. Or what. But. Right. It was definitely different than what you see in the American culture. Yeah, well, yeah absolutely. To that. It definitely wasn't something you would see in public. Um, there was, I don't think I've ever saw my dad and mom, like, actually hold hands until we got, until they started becoming modern, like, in public. Oh, really? And me and my brother were, like, in high school at that point. Can you remember the first time you saw your parents hold hands in public? Or do you, is there, like, one that's like, oh, God, this is weird? No. No, was, I never thought it was weird. It just felt it just felt like just a natural. Like, yeah, of course. It because happens. I mean, like I saw it in high school all the time, so like, okay, it wasn't anything weird about it. I saw it in movies. I just I'm like I don't remember when that first happened. Yeah, but like stuff like that. So obviously they did, but they had their own ways of showing it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool because like I, you know, even preparing for this, I didn't really think that there's an Indian way of flirting. You know, so that's pretty. That's pretty funny to hear. Do you feel like much of that will carry over to your relationship once you finally do find a, a, a wife? Or do you feel like you are very much Americanized and you'll and like it's probably, you know, you're probably going to be like a very American flirt? I think it's going to be a little bit of a mixture of both. Yeah. Like it really also depends on who she ends up being, like what yeah. her personality is. Absolutely. Because you never, if she's more traditional and more Indian, if that's who I end up dating or marry, then it might be more like what my parents had. If she's yeah. more Americanized like me, it might be more Americanized, or it might just be a mixture depending on how Indian she is compared to how American she is. If it's a brown person, if it's a brown chick, right? If it's not, no telling. Well, I gotta be honest, dude. Like, and I know I've said this, and I, I, I probably I won't say any names, but there have been two girls that you you've worked with, right? Right. That I've just been like, oh my god, Armand is so good with this person because <laughs> the fact that some girl haven't hasn't just like hog tied you and thrown her thrown you in her trunk yet, dude, is just a, is just audacious to me because you are a catch, dude. You are an awesome guy. You're doing a fantastic in business. Um, you're you're just incredibly sweet. So like, you know. When when you're ready, you know, there's a, 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 some girl is just going to find a, a fantastic guy. Um, I I do want to know, though, inside of the context of marriage, mm -hmm. is there anything different that you feel like you grew up seeing from your parents that you want to implement? Like, what do you, is there anything you would do differently inside of marriage? Hmm. I don't know the one thing I would do the same. Yeah. Uh, my parents, whenever me and my brother got in trouble, one of them would always be like, who would, who would come up and yell at us. But the other one, as soon as the yelling was done, would wait a couple minutes, then come get us in the room and like tell us it's okay. That's fine. Like mistakes happen, stuff like that. Oh, you know, interesting. That one of us, one of them was always like on our side, be like, we understand. This is what you did wrong. This is how you need to fix it. But one of them would always yell at us. To make sure that they know, hey, you're going to get in trouble if you do this again. Interesting. Like, it was their way of disciplining us. That really actually worked a lot because we were, we loved both of them. We weren't ever afraid of, like, both of them. But at the same time, we knew that if we did something wrong, one of them would definitely be really mad. You're saying one of them, did, did they alternate who the bad guy was? Depending on the situation. That's awesome. Like, what was the situation where your mom would come and yell at you and your dad would be the, the comforter? Uh... Schoolwork, yeah, yeah. Because my dad, like, whenever he was in school, he would he was at bad grades, stack off and uh -huh. go to a movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. He's like, I'm gonna be an hypocrite. You got to yell at this time, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, but like, whenever we were growing up and social media was becoming a thing, and people were getting on Facebook younger and younger and younger, people would share jokes that sometimes were not really appropriate for a teenager to be sharing. Uh huh. And once I accidentally liked it without realizing I liked the post, I shouldn't have. And it shows up on your feedback uh -huh. then it's, saying, 
some and some like the post. Yeah. Now it only shows up if you comment or share it. Oh, does it? Okay. It doesn't normally say someone liked it unless, you know, there's something going on. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not great with social media, man. You know me. Back then it was like someone liked this post or your son liked this post. And it was like a really inappropriate joke. And my dad was extremely pissed. Oh, no. And my mom was like, okay, I get it. It was a joke. Not a big deal. And my dad's like, I want to take your phone away. And he did for three hours. But you know. Interesting. So is your mom the the comic? Mm-hmm. Your mom's the comic, oh, the, mm-hmm. like, is the better sense of humor? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Because I, I really feel, I always feel like dads are typically dumb. Well, we like to be dumb. Well, you know? my dad's whole thing was he knew it was a joke, too. Yeah. His entire thing was back then he still cared more about what his family, like, external family thought. Okay. And how he was, like, in India, it's a really big thing to what, there's a saying called, Log Gyakenge, which means what will people say? Say, say it for me again, Lord. Log Gyakenge. Okay. Which it translates to what, what will people, people say? say? Okay. So they were really like, okay, if you do this, what will people say? Like, what will they think of you? What will they think of us that raised you? Stuff like that. And back before, you know, we were in high school and stuff, my parents cared a lot about that. Yeah. As they grew up, they're like, who gives a shit? Yeah. Excuse my language. <laughs> nah, you're, you're like, it's, <laughs> but. They were like, who gives a shit? I don't care what people think of me. They're not the ones that work this hard to raise you. They're not the ones that work 18, 24 hours a day. To They're not the ones who woke up at 2 o'clock to feed right. you, burp you, get your puke between their right. toes. Like, it doesn't you know? matter what they think. The only thing that matters is what you think and what we think. Yeah. And we love you. We trust you. And the, I imagine they're probably so religious, right? Yeah. So yeah. so they probably care what God thinks, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because. Yeah. So, and that's, that's another thing I haven't touched on yet is you guys are Muslim. Yeah. And so I'm curious, like, cause once we, we, I like to talk to you about the Muslim faith because I don't get to have any exposure to it as interested as, as I am. Right. Um, so do you feel like you've learned anything from the Muslim faith on how to be a husband or anything about marriage? Because I know that like the Christian faith, faith has a lot. There's like a lot about marriage in the Bible. Right. right. So I'm sure, I'm sure the Quran probably has quite a bit. Right. It does, but in fact, now that you mention it, I've never actually read anything in the Quran that actually talks about marriage as... Because you probably haven't cared, right? No, one, I haven't cared, but two, we're not taught that as young individuals when we went to school, like religious school. We're not taught that because it doesn't have to do with us that young. Yes. It's something that you learn as you grow. Yeah. But also... It's like, why do these kids need to know this? Right. Like, yeah. it doesn't there's a, there's a certain scripture in the Bible that talks about... Uh, I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but, but, but the, the joke is still there. Um, talks about climbing the, the, the fruit tree and grabbing hole, a hold of the pomegranates. And it's like refer, referencing breasts. And it's like, and like you just read it in context and it's just so funny. But it's like the saw, the, 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 the Song of Solomon, uh, you know, is like this the 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 romance book in the in the Bible, and so like I remember when I was first doing my first real read through the Bible, I was like in that part, I was like, oh, <laughs> there's so much sexual stuff in here. I'm not sure. I, I know it's the Bible, but right. like, I'm like looking around, like, that, can people read this? You know, can people? So it, is is there something like that in the in the Quran? Or I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't read. It. You just don't have to cover because I we. Like, my sector of Muslim, right, Yeah, has a present living imam who translates and guides us in the world as the world becomes more modern, as the world develops. Okay. So he helps translate what the Quran says for us. Right, and as we were talking world. the other day, is it the same guy who's kind of like the Pope yeah. that we were talking yeah. about? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he translates the Quran to us in the modern day. So obviously there's stuff in there that says, like, don't drink alcohol, don't do drugs, right? Right. But stuff also changes like somewhere in there it says to pray three or five times or something like that i don't know the exact wording gotcha don't quote me on that right but he helps us translate saying it doesn't matter if you actually pray three or five times a day it's how much do you remember god in your daily life sometimes yes you are at work during the time of prayer you can't just stop what you're doing and pray right but can you take five seconds and remember him can you say his name i love that that's what makes a difference because you do have to live your life. You have to live in the world that you live in. You have to be able to be happy. Yeah. And religion shouldn't take over that. It should be a part of that. I like that. So if you're, you know, saying, hey, I can't work this shift because I have to go to prayer. Well, sometimes you may have to work that shift. Yeah. What's, I mean, what's going to, then your family goes and right. you lose a job and your kids are, your right. your family's in detriment. Like right. there's a, there's a verse in the Bible that, that says that, um, I, I want to butcher again, but this is the same context. 
is that worse is he that that can't feed and provide for his family than a sinner, right? right. Um, and I think that's kind of makes sense, you know, like you have to be able to fit in this modern world. Right. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not Catholic, so I don't really know what the Pope does, actually. <laughs> I, I just don't care to learn. Right. I've just never known. But I kind of do hope that it's similar, at least for Catholics. And we're actually going to have a Catholic couple um, on the podcast to kind of talk about like kind of the similar stuff. Like, right. But they've been married for, I want to say, like eight, nine, ten years. So, um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll have to make sure to ask. And what is the what is the guy's name? Uh, his name is His Highness Theodore Khan. Oh, so oh. it's like royalty. Okay. Really, he got the name. His Highness. His Highness the Aga Khan. The 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 Aga Aga Khan Khan. Okay, so the like the yeah, yeah. Aga Khan. Okay, yeah. interesting. And that's and that's the role. No, then that's the role name, right? No, that's his title. Okay. Um, that's I don't know. I don't remember how His Highness became a title. In all honesty, they taught it to us, but I don't remember. Mm. But it's been passed down over three, only three generations now. Okay. Before that, it was other titles and stuff. Because, like, back in the day, uh, it, so his title for the Muslim world is Imam. Imam. Okay, that's the one I was looking for. Right. Gotcha. Imam. So back in the day, the Imams had countries that they actually ruled over. They were kings and stuff. Mm -hmm. And as the world became more modern and kings and queens started to die out more and you know we had presidents and prime ministers and stuff like that the imam also took like got rid of countries for say and started becoming more modern so he doesn't actually rule a country anymore like he used to back in the day he doesn't have an army like they used to back in the day but that's just one of the titles that some royal family gave him so that's just one of the titles that people it's know a traditional thing right. okay yeah cool so it's just a traditional title it doesn't actually mean he's the king but okay just... so at, obviously like you said when you're younger they didn't really teach much because your kids don't even know this stuff yet um as you've gotten older and you've become bachelor age is has that been like brought up more not really like as i've grown up more and more the one thing i've realized <laughs> also listening to the imam is we do need to live in the modern world and some of the things that happen or that are said in the Quran have been changed for say like it doesn't really impact us anymore so like it says hey you should go to um mosque seven days a week obviously the imam's like if you can't do that just remember the name of god and that's just as important so i haven't really as i've gotten older learned more i kind of just stopped where they stopped teaching us okay because i'm like okay the biggest lesson in the quran is be a good person do good things be nice be a human being right mm -hmm. so as long as i live like that i know i'm following what the quran says i don't okay. have to read and learn gotcha. as long as i'm doing that so personally i haven't looked into it i haven't read anything gotcha because all i care about is being a good human being being okay respectful. Okay. So you probably feel like as long as like whenever you do find a wife, as long as you're treating her with the utmost respect that you can and treating her properly, as you can imagine doing, then you're you're falling in line. Right. No matter what. Which makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Um yeah. okay. I feel like a book shouldn't tell me how to live. Right. Right. So. Yeah. And uh and if you if you need that little bit of guidance, then you probably should just do a little bit of inward searching period. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's why we have the imam who helps translate mm -hmm. stuff like that in our day-to-day -day life. So if I need to, I can always look up to him and be like, okay, what's something he said recently that might help me if I need guidance? Right. That's awesome. Mm. Cool. So, man, so your parents, your parents seem pretty selfless and hardworking because they wanted to supply you mm -hmm. and Arhan with a really good life. Right. And, and they have. And they have, absolutely. And, I mean, they, they have a lot coming up that they're still working on together. Yeah. And so that's something that I want to... I, I Do you think that they've always had goals together, yeah. it sounds like? Like, pretty right. big goals. Yeah. Like, she was in India, he was in Africa. And obviously a big goal was to close that gap. So she eventually moved to Africa, mm -hmm. right? And... Then you guys moved to New York, mm -hmm. and then you guys moved to Oklahoma. Weird enough, why from New York to Oklahoma? I get it because they they had a they had a friend who had a gas station, mm -hmm. so they came. But and then they've you know now they've had the goal of opening up their own shop. 
and as well as raising two stellar young men. And then they have a goal of doing some other stuff. If you want to toss that out there. Yeah, they want to eventually, hopefully, get own more property and own different businesses. Like they want to that same place where they open the smoke shop, they have room to open another business. And I think last time I talked to them, they wanted to do like an ice cream part or, or a burger area where they can just go and get burgers. They live in a small town. That town doesn't have much. Yeah. So the more that they can provide to the town, the better for them, but also better for the town. I would imagine a big part of their romance, because romance is a big part of marriage, right? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to look the same every single day. Um, and in every single relationship, <clears throat> but I bet a big part of their romance is checking off. It's like, we're going to make this happen. Check. And I can look at that person that I'm sitting there, that, that I'm in love with. Right. And I can say, well, we've done this together. Mm-hmm. And I bet that's a big thing for them. And I, I, and I haven't got to meet your parents yet. I hope I do get to one day. Um, but, uh, come with me to Arkansas. Yeah. I need, see the well, little I little need to see my, well, actually my, it's funny enough. My dad from Arkansas is coming here <laughs> from Little Rock, you know, same, yeah. same area. Um, so, uh. Yeah, no, I would like to go see the Eclipse some, at some point. That'd, that'd be pretty cool. I, I don't know where I'm going to go for it yet, but um, April 6th, right? 8th. 8th. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that with me. I mean, I they, they didn't go on a lot of dates, no. but they flirted. Mm-hmm. And now they do. Now that me and my brother don't live with them and me and my brother are both successful enough where they're not having to provide for us every single time. Right. Now they do go on dates. Like, right. They go and... Their dates include going and buying stuff for the store, but then getting dinner right afterwards or stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, they do do that more often now. That's awesome. That's so good to hear. No. And um, they've raised two kids, so that's out, that's out of the way. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that with about your parents. I, I think it's so cool because what I'm most interested in seeing is what Isaac, you know, my son, can right. pick up from Sierra and I. Yeah. Because we, we try to show affection to each other in front of him because we really want to like show what a healthy marriage can look like but something you actually just you've actually just told me was that not every healthy marriage necessarily looks the exact same yeah as far as like you know like flirting dating you know i i i I do think going on dates and flirting is a good thing but it doesn't have to look the exact same so i think that's really cool yeah, and the one thing that helped me and my brother as we were growing up is they let my parents always let me and my brother know everything they're doing is for us. Yeah, so that you know we would know. Like, and how would they say that? It sometimes they would flat out say it, like yeah. we're doing this for you. Or sometimes they would show it, like whenever we went shopping for clothes. So like we're only shopping for y'all today, not for me and my, or for mom. Sometimes it would be the opposite. It'd be like, hey, we're only shopping for. Like my mom would come up to me and be like. Hey, don't get anything. We're only shopping for dad, even if he says it. Because I love like, because like, we picked something up. My dad might not get something. You, it's something I forgot to say. Was you and your brother have very fancy tastes? Yes. We Where did, did that come? My from? mom. Really? Okay. So her closet is actually probably bigger than the room that we're in. No right now. freaking way! This is a big room, and it is full. And she still doesn't have enough room. Oh my goodness! That's awesome. What is it full of? Uh, just Indian clothes? clothing. Yeah. Okay. Indian clothing. Yeah. She oh, interesting. Section for Western. Clothing. Do they? Do, does she wear Indian clothing on the normal? Was that like her? She at a mosque. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, mosque or Indian parties and stuff like that. No, okay. she has Western clothes that she wears to work. Yeah, that was nice. But she does have a lot of Indian clothing. It's her most prized possession. I love that. She told us that when she dies, we still can't sell it. Wow. Good luck. Her clothing is insured. Is it that expensive? It's, no, but I mean, with how much she has, yes. Okay. But like one, like an individual piece. If you have seven hundred, you know, five dollar clo- pieces of clothes, that's right. now thirty five hundred dollars. Right. Were... Yeah. Um. She normally only wears something once, or if she wears it a second time, she wears it a different style, and people don't realize it's the same outfit. That's interesting. She has a very unique way of dressing up. Okay. So, so is it? Did it? Is it fancy? Yeah. Okay. It's fancy, and like she'll spend hours on her hair. She'll spend. Hour, not hours, but she'll spend time on her makeup. She'll make sure that she always looks the best when she goes out to like these gatherings at mosques and stuff. And that's where me and my brother picked it up from. Be like, we want to look good. We've watched all these movies, and you have actors that are always dressing fancy, like especially in Indian movies. Yeah, always dressing oh, yeah. fancy. Oh yeah. And my mom would always be like, "You would look good in that. You would look good in that. Don't wear that stuff like that." Yeah. 
And eventually, as you know, my parents became more successful and we, me and my brother started working and we became more successful. Stuff like that is what we were attracted to. Interesting. Like fancy jackets, fancy shirts. Do you feel like that will affect the girl you look for as in a wife? Do you feel like you're going to look for that in a wife? Not necessarily. I think that it would definitely be a perk. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it, you know, to me, name brands are not that important. Okay. The style is more important. Than Absolutely. Brands. You like you. It can be a shirt off a of wish, but right. if it looks good. It looks good. Right. Exactly. So I don't really care about name brands. Got. I care more about like I can wear a black shirt, but if I wear a black shirt with a nice jacket, that might look better than just wearing a black shirt. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just a Walmart black shirt, it'll change the style. Or you put a gold chain on it, it'll look better. Right. So to me, the name brand's not important. I don't think if I meet a girl, I would care if she cares about name brand. Mm -hmm. More to me is. Does she care enough about fashion? Does she like getting dressed up? Does she not like getting dressed up? So, so far you've said that your mom would, and I'm sure your dad did this too, but your mom would say we're just buying stuff for dad. Is Does your dad have good fashion on his own or does he have good fashion because of your mom? She, he has good fashion because me and my brother. Oh, really? We would tell him. We look good <laughs> on it. Obviously, when we were younger, yes, my mom would. But okay. when we were younger also, it didn't matter what looked good. It's what can we afford and what works for the situation like i need a jacket what's a good jacket that will last me a year round so Stuff did you like guys that. okay so you guys your parents are successful you're successful your brother's got a great great thing going he's successful um did you guys grow up poor and then like through the success you've you've obviously you know got more wealth and money for your family or have you guys always kind of had a moderate amount of wealth to where you know you're always able to kind of be comfortable and do whatever you wanted and no there were times where uh my parents didn't know if we would have dinner that night right. like they obviously always figured it out yeah but there were times where no it was not always uh let's go out and eat let's go buy stuff like they worked really hard and that's what they would tell us and we saw that in them that's why me and my brother love working as hard as we do okay. is because we saw our parents as young kids working hard working 24 hours sometimes for you guys for us so yeah. th and that's the love that we saw them growing up with because that's the one thing they always had in common is they would do it for us is a girl that you get married to gonna have to deal with six 12 16 hour work days i mean i would because that you much. are married to what you do man hey hopefully in five years i can hire someone to do it for me and i go travel yeah, that's where I'm at too, dude. We're out to travel together because yeah. I'm I'm dying to go a lot of places. Yeah, um, but that's that's the end goal, of course, right? Yeah, like I want to do what my parents did. They worked hard for a long time, and now they can relax a little bit more. Yeah, and hopefully in the next couple of years they'll stop working and they'll hire people to work for them. And I would imagine because of how hard your parents did work, put you in a good spot. You don't have to work as hard. You you do work hard, mm -hmm. but you won't maybe have to work as hard for as long as they did because they gave you they helped give you a leg up, right? Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for my parents, I might still be at a photography company that won't be named yeah. working because I couldn't afford to go out on my yeah. You know, bunch of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> we we won't know, but yeah, we both worked there. Yep. yep, we did both work there. But because of that, I'm like. Because they were able to help and invest in me, I was able to afford to go out on my own, be able to start my own company. And now, yeah, that's one of the reasons I work so hard is, one, I need to pay them back for helping me. But also, they helped me and they have other business ideas that they have in mind. I want to be able to help them. Right. I want to be able to invest in their businesses, which so far I've been lucky enough to be able to do. I am, I'm really excited about the uh, the one you mentioned, the, the, RV, the park. RV park. I think that's so cool. Yeah. That's such a big brain play. Like, just get a piece of land, put a gas line, put a water line. And make money. We're doing pretty good. Yep. You know, that's amazing. What kind, is there any licensing? I don't know if you of know. Of course there is. But yeah. I mean, I don't know what licensing is. but I'm, yeah, I'm curious because, I mean, it's not, it doesn't seem like a lot. That's I mean, pretty awesome. it, I mean, if you have to have any kind of business, there's licensing. The government will lose one. Yeah, they're gonna get, you're going to get their money somehow. Oh. But. Yeah. Armand, I appreciate you chatting with me, man. Uh, yeah. What about your parents specifically? Because yeah, I haven't got to meet them. Yeah. Um, they've raised, like I said, I've said multiple times, stellar kids. Um, and I can't wait for you to find a young lady. You know, <laughs> I'm going to keep pushing that. Um, because I, w I really want to see those lessons come to fruition and just that hard work that they have taught you. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems they very much love each other through the hard work that they do for you. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really cool. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anything you want to say before we, before we quit? 
Go follow us on Instagram, all about now photography. There we go. <laughs> yep. Hey, also, we haven't talked about your 360 photo booths yet. So um, this podcast is about weddings uh, or marriage, but it's also about weddings. Um, if you need a 360 photo booth for your wedding, which is kind of explain what that is. So it's a little platform that people can stand on. We love having brides and grooms on it because we can make amazing videos on it. But you stand on it. There's a camera that rotates around you while you move, do some kind of action. You can do like a first, not a first kiss, but a kiss on it, a dip and kiss, um, whatever. And it creates a cool slow motion video out of it that you can then share. And it can have your choice of music. We can put titles on it. So it's branded to your wedding. If you have a wedding logo, we can add that to it. Um, it's just a fun thing. And it's fun for your guests, too. Especially while you're out taking pictures with Rob, because, you know, you're going to pump up hi, Rob, right? While you're out taking pictures and he takes forever because he wants a great shot. I've been there. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Five minutes over beats five minutes to see it up. It typically means 15, I think. <laughs> but while you're out doing that, it's great entertainment for your guests to be yeah. able to do something, keep themselves entertained. Or while there's a line for food, if it's a long line, some of the guests can come over and do the 360 boot until the line dies down. Stuff Absolutely, like that. and you and they get the videos through a QR code. Yep, videos are sent via QR code or AirDrop. It's fast; they get it right away. They can share it that night. Um, I think of it as a great way to market your wedding. Absolutely, so people know that you got married because when your friends share the video, it has your name on it. It has your wedding date. It has the music you've picked. It can have your song on it. You know, so that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and um, what are your current rates for that? Uh, if I change. It will, will probably will change. That's yeah, business works. Yeah, actually, at the start of the year, we did change it a little bit. We now charge three hundred dollars an hour for the three hundred and sixty booth. That's still pretty good. Uh, it's still pretty good. It's actually still cheaper than most of our competitors. I would but say so. Yeah, we also do offer a lot with that. It comes with the TV screen. It comes with props. It comes with um, an attendant. I was saying you don't have to pay extra for the attendant. No, it comes with it. Um, the overlay and the music choice is free with it. Um, you don't have to pay extra to have your own choice of it. Like. We'll make the artwork, we'll edit it. Or if you have an invitation and you want it to look like that, send it to us and we can make that invitation part of the artwork. So that's, like it, that. it, you say we, we're talking Isabel. Isabel's yeah. doing that in chat. Yeah. yeah, she's that's doing awesome. all of it. She helps. It's Photoshop. It's Isabel. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, brother. Well, I love you. Um, good to have you here. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time.